Hello, hello, hello. It's Stephanie here and welcome to episode 104 of the Rent to Rent Success podcast. Today I have with me the rock star, Afam Onyenakala. And Afam is a podcast host, an entrepreneur and an investor. And what he specializes in is making general wealth understandable and accessible for families. And he's got a unique perspective all about how to build wealth through learning, laughter, leadership, and legacy. And I love Afam's podcast, and that's one of the reasons that I invited him to join us on the show today to talk about wealth building. Welcome to the show, Afam on Yana Kala. How are you doing? I'm very well, Stephanie. Thank you very much for having me today. Brilliant. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, we usually talk here about rent to rent and running a property business. But what we're doing today is we're widening our lens and talking about wealth building as a whole, which is something that we're all interested in if we're here either recording or listening to this podcast. So, Afan, before we dig into uh, your nuggets today, I'd love to hear more about your story. Uh, thanks, Stephanie. Um, on my podcast, I talk about my story. I start by going through a little bit about my history. Um, my grandparents, uh, my paternal grandfather and maternal grandfather, my grandparents um, originally came from Nigeria. And when they were around in the, the region of the 1920s, life was very different to what we have here now. So for example, on the side of my paternal grandfather, he was very much an entrepreneur in his own right. He owned land, he had animals, uh, property and the like. And part of what he did back then was that he, one of the things is that he actually gave people land as investment capital for them to start as entrepreneurs. So he had, an, he had his journey there. Um, his wife uh, then also, she was an entrepreneur in her own right. She ended up delivering around 50% of the babies in the village that she came from at the time. So they, they had a very unique uh, background to start. My, my maternal grandfather in Nigeria, he was involved in real estate and owned a petroleum station back then. But through just the whole process of time through colonialism and then through an independent Nigeria, things changed where the redefining of the national boundaries at times would cause various ethnic conflicts and, and displacement between various communities. And then as a result of that, um, my parents migrated from Nigeria to the UK. Part of that was as a result of the civil war that took place in the country at the time. So they educated people that they were. They came to the UK to start uh, a new life here. They met in London. And as a result of that, I was born later on. But as time went on, I started to ask various questions about wealth. How is wealth established? What is generational wealth? How does, it, how does your upbringing, how do circumstances, how do situations in life affect that? Because many families like my family had to start many things from scratch as immigrants so i started to ask the question how does that affect your position in life some people are born with wealth but they squander that wealth within a generation why is that and as i began to look into things further i was able to actually see that generational wealth in its entirety is not purely a financial dynamic. A lot of times when we hear that subject, instantly people think about the financial element, but they don't realize that wealth in its essence is much more of a holistic term. Um, wealth comes from the old English word wheel, which actually means well-being or welfare. So wealth in essence is fundamentally a state of being where which can generate riches. So I started looking at what are the components that really define generational wealth. And the more you look at it, the more you realize that 
it's a lot more than just money. It's looking at things like your social capital, spiritual capital, human capital, intellectual capital. And the, the combination of that can, will then translate eventually generationally, but it's all down to the intent initially. So that's why um, with my show, I not just talk. I, I don't just talk about financial things. I talk about generational wealth, but I tend to look at it through four specific lenses. So I focus on learning. I look at laughter. I look at uh, leadership, and I look at legacy. And on the show, I have a combination of interviews that I do with people, also topical subjects. So we go around the houses and we look at things ranging from wealth generating principles to history, to um, stories of tragedy and triumph and success. Because a lot of the time when we look at successful people in whatever endeavor they may be involved with or focusing on, a lot of times people can have the view that it's okay for them, they are wealthy, they're established, they are doing great things. How can I even begin to compare myself to that person? But if we inspect the situation in more detail, we will more often than not find that every one of these successful people have had a breaking point of some kind that has been a catalyst for them to change and become the person that we all see now. So I like to get into the nitty gritty of what was the challenge that they've had to overcome because it makes the stories more relatable to, to everyone really. If you can see a little bit of yourself in someone else's story, you're more likely to feel and believe that actually I can achieve a dream that I'm thinking about. I can achieve taking one step to either getting out of debt or going to study or setting up a business or um, being confident enough to start something that you may have had doubts about before. Um, so that, yeah, that's a little bit about um, where, we, where we are with the, the show and legacy learning. Fantastic. So I was very interested and I love your podcast and do go over and listen. It's a fantastic podcast and uh, I do have the web uh, the website here, uh, legacylearning.co.uk and you can listen to the podcast on the website or in, in any of the podcast apps. It would be great, Afam, if you could, we got your four L's learning, laughter, leadership, and legacy. And it'd be great if you could just give us um, a description of each one, uh, what you mean by it and how it really comes to fruition in terms of wealth building. Sure, absolutely. Um, with the first point, learning, I, I touch on learning is because, the reason I touch on learning is because we grow by learning in order to achieve or become more, you have to invest in more than anything else, whether you, rather than investing in, in businesses or stocks or other programs, the, the, the biggest investment I believe is to invest in yourself, in your mind, because um, the, the information that you put into yourself will pay dividends later on. So again, if we, if we look at any success story, they didn't become that way just by drifting along. There was a deliberate journey, a deliberate application of knowledge, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and then the accumulation of wisdom to then become more than what they were originally. So with learning, I'm, I'm really all about the journey of personal development. I believe that is the first and the most important area that we should invest in 
before looking at anything else. Secondly, yes, um, sure, absolutely. So. Whenever we have um, people come in and give their success stories, whether in property or last episode, we had Jason Patterson come in and talk about his wealth building. Uh, he's He built up a London property portfolio. When he first started off, he was earning £17,000 a year. He worked at Sainsbury's at stacking shelves for over uh, 10 years. I can't remember the exact figures now. But he also had, um, he was working as a teacher for over, uh, for £17,000, as I say, to start off with. And then <clears throat> he was doing private tuition. But somebody mentioned something to him at work, one of his colleagues. At the time, it wasn't as well known as it is today, 20 years ago, that he was renting out the property he'd lived in previously with his girlfriend. He was moving back home and renting out this property. And Jason was amazed at this knowledge. Not only that, but the person had bought the property without paying for the property in full. He bought it with a mortgage, and that was something Jason didn't hear of. But on that information, he then went and consciously learned what to do next and found the next step and the next step and the next step. And so it's exactly what you what you said. Adding to your mind is how you create, you know, that's the seeds of the value that creates the wealth. So I think you're so spot on with this number one as learning and I know you have four L's and the second one is laughter so bring it on yeah before I go into that second one just to touch on something you've just said I, I believe that wisdom is the true source of wealth that that ability to put into action the knowledge that you are able to comprehend that to me is what wisdom is and then the application of that is what is the true source of wealth and um i i, I often use the analogy that your wealth is like an apple tree but your riches are like the apples on the tree so as you nourish yourself and grow like the apple tree you are able to generate an abundance of fruit as a result of that so um, so that's, yeah, that's part of how I feel about learning. Um, the second point, laughter. I, I decided to touch on laughter because I believe that we were able to have more enriching relationships, um, have more courage to go for things. Um, we live more fulfilling lives when we're having fun doing that and with fun i don't mean silly necessarily silly endeavors but i believe with that that if you can bring joy into the things that you do then work in itself will no longer seem like work um it will be a joy when you look at people such as famous people like david beckham for example He's made a lot of money through his career through football, but if he was here today, he would probably say to us that him doing him playing football never really seemed like work. It was joy. It was connected to what he was passionate about. It was, I would say, it, he was able to. There's a very good book by um, a gentleman, the late Sir Ken Robinson. He's, he was a wonderful educator and he wrote a book called The Element and he talked about the element being the intersection between what you're passionate about and what you're skilled at. So um, finding the balance between the two helps you find that, that, that sweet spot as it were, because for example, you're quite successful in the area of rent to rent, but let's say for example that this was something that you could do easily, but your heart wasn't in it. You found it boring. Everyone would consider you, Stephanie, to be a success because you have a thriving business. But if in your heart you're doing this and there's no joy, you're, there, there's, a, there's a part of your passion that's not being fulfilled here. So you can actually do this and, and carry on doing it. But if you were to face yourself if you're to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself the question, am I really being fulfilled here? So that's that's why I, I touch on laughter, because I feel if we can all 
discover or find that space where we can utilize our gifts but enjoy doing that, then not only are we being of benefit to ourselves, but our unique sphere of influence will reap the rewards of that as well. Uh, because you you tend you you will tend to be not just an inspiration within your sphere of influence, but that effortlessness of you doing what you do, either because you love it or you're passionate about it, that will rub off, that will rub off onto so many people. And um it, it's it it elevates the game, I believe, in that respect. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think that where we can bring joy to whatever we do, it's it is such a bonus. And I just say to people who are listening and perhaps they're working in a job they really don't like and perhaps it's a stepping stone for them of going to the next uh, steps uh, of their doing. But I think it is possible also to bring joy even when you have a job that perhaps you don't like because there is a space where you can find gratitude or a purpose within that role to say that you do enjoy the salary that you get paid and there may be certain elements that you can bring joy to or gratitude to that can make it feel that bit of more lighter and more joyful even though it is a job that you don't particularly like what do you think about that um i i, I would agree with that i think you touched on a very important word there gratitude because even if you're in a situation where you're either in a job that's you're you're not feeling fulfilled in or you're in a you're in a situation that's particularly difficult if you can find three things to be grateful for that will bring the state that you're currently in right now into into a better perspective because all of us in one way or another have gone through periods where either we've had to do things that we don't like or we're in a difficult situation so none of us are immune to that but i think what separates the good from the great and the excellent is your perspective your perspective and your gratitude right for example you may be in a job that's not paying very well but one way to be grateful is be thankful that you have a job be thankful that you have something that is bringing in an income for you to number one be able to eat two possibly have a roof over your head three to have a healthy state of mind that you can start thinking about right how can i progress from where i am so every one of us has something it becomes a challenge when we are not grateful about where we are. If we start looking to other people and comparing ourselves with other people that, oh, they have more than I have, or they have gotten further away than I have, we don't know what their unique lane has been. We don't know what their unique challenges have been. And the grass always seems greener on the other side, but I believe one of the ways where we can be excellent in our own lane is to do just that. Find your own lane and run your own race. In the process, celebrate other people's success, but recognize that you have a unique race of your own and you're not competing against anyone else. More often than not, you're competing against yourself, which is why I come back to learning, because your ability to learn is what's going to enable you to become your better self yes good point um so the, the the third l that you have here is leadership so tell us how leadership uh, comes into this i th i think with leadership it's more about adopting the posture of discipline and intent that that the your Okay, so you're in a situation where now you're having fun doing what you're here to do. But I believe that the the leadership is where you where the discipline of progress must become greater than having fun. For example, you can have someone who plays golf and it's fun for them. So they play golf every now and again. But 
the elevation from somebody who's doing it to as a hobby to becoming that person who's an Olympic champion in golf is leadership. They've implemented the discipline to go outside and play golf when they don't feel like it, to do what they need to do when it's easier to do something else, to go in the rain and brush up on your, whether it's golf, whether it's tennis, whether it's business, to do the things that you have to do, whether you like it or not, because it is the thing to do. It's about taking that narrow lane because for most people, the the journey to average is a, is a very broad road that everyone can take. But the journey to success and excellent is a very narrow and disciplined road and very few take it, which is why in proportionality, more people are unsuccessful than those who are successful because the successful people have decided to take a disciplined road on the journey to their goal. And that is essentially leadership, leading yourself, doing what you need to do to make it happen. I love that. That's a different perspective on leadership, um, but it's putting at the forefront self-leadership and putting at the forefront really your relationship with yourself. Yes. And sometimes when we think about self-confidence, one of the key elements of self-confidence is having trust in yourself. When you know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do, as you said, it's the pathway to success. So thank you for framing that so beautifully for us. And, and what I would add to that, what I would add to that, Stephanie, is that I believe that confidence comes with, with repetition because... Mm -hmm. By discipline, you become better as you go along. So when you start something, you're not perfect at the start. So your confidence will be low. But if you make the decision to form a habit through consistent action or, in essence, discipline, your confidence will grow. Now, for me, I'll use an example. Um, as a youngster... I used to play a lot of basketball in school. I played in school. I played for a club. I played for um, the borough that I lived in at the time in, in the games. Um, but I wasn't always good. I was more than often than not the smallest person on the team. But I worked at it. I really worked at it to the point whereby my skill level overcame... Um, what you would consider a height deficiency in basketball terms. And, and by doing that, I developed a level of confidence that enabled me to go up against opponent, opponents much bigger than me, taller than me, and overcome them. Mm. That's brilliant. And finally, we come to the fourth L in your framework, which is legacy. Yes. With legacy, it's all about leaving your mark on the world. What do you want to be remembered for? What, what can you pass down to your family, your sphere of influence, your, your relatives, and subsequent generations? So it's not just about passing on a legacy of financial income and wealth in that respect, but a legacy of values, a legacy of, of systems, a legacy of thinking, um, and something that will, if possible, outlast you. And with that, I, I feel with legacy, leg legacy is something that I believe enables people to pull through unsurmountable obstacles because you're working towards an objective that's not all about you. There's a bigger picture here. It's all about your service. The things that you do and that you aspire to achieve, is it just for you? If it's only for you, what's the point? Are you doing something in a manner that can influence people that look to you? Do you want to change the dynamic of, let's say, 
for example, you came from a family that nobody has ever been to school before. You then become the first person to go to secondary school and then university. You have now become the tip of an arrow. Um, and by you breaking through, you open the door for other, people's to fo for other people to follow after you. But with legacy, the pressure is always more intense when you are starting something because you're, you're, you're charting a course that may have not been done before. But as you press through, you make it easier for those to come after you. So that's why my show is called Learning for Legacy, because all of us have a unique skill, a unique gift that we are here to contribute to the world. And by us either discovering that and making that reality, we will unconsciously give people the, the inspiration to do the same. But conversely, by us not becoming our best self, <clears throat> by us not becoming our best self, we are actually, in fact, robbing our community, robbing our families, robbing our nation of an incredible degree of value. This is why, you know, if if we look at the extreme, we, if we look at a sad, sad circumstances of suicide, for example, sometimes, I'm not saying this is exclusively the reason, but sometimes people have gone down that route because either they don't feel they have anything to contribute or that nobody cares about them or who they are. But the, the opposite is actually true. The opposite is, the, is, 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 is that they do have an incredible sense of value. They do have an incredible amount of worth. They probably haven't discovered it yet or people haven't seen that within themselves. Possibly, maybe what they needed is a mentor in their life, somebody that they can look to as an example. Possibly what they could have done with is some form of inspiration, a new way of thinking. Possibly somebody smiling at them in the road that day would have made that, that could have made them think, actually, I'm gonna have another chance. I'm gonna take one more step and things may change. And the, the countless stories of countless success stories out there of people who we look at and admire who have been in that exact same situation. So we've had the four L's, learning, laughter, leadership and legacy. Thanks so much for sharing your framework with us. I know that this would make a fantastic book and uh, I know that's something that you are thinking of doing and I do encourage you, let us know when you have your book coming out. Absolutely. And what I would love to know is you have set about teaching people because you've seen people making a lot of mistakes or not creating that wealth and just letting the money go through their fingers. So what would you say are the three biggest mistakes that you see people making? Uh, that, that's a really good question. I would say one of the mistakes is underestimating your value, not believing in yourself enough to bank on yourself um and when that doesn't happen it's very easy for other people's opinions or perspectives to actually cut your dream off at the knees for example someone may want to start a business but the the voices around them may be saying, why should you start a business? Nobody in your family has started a business. What do you know about business? What, you know, everybody who's gone into business fails at business. And it, it's, and, and there's some truth in some of that, but if people are listening to critics, 
and not really taking time to look at success stories that include journeys of failure, it's harder to then bank on themselves. So I feel, try to, I, I feel if they can look at or find stories of people who have achieved what they would like to do and learn more about that, it gives them the confidence to actually take the step. And even if they fail, don't be too hard on yourself because failure mm -hmm. is simply feedback. It just gives you information that, okay, the path you've taken is not the best one. What did I learn from that and how can I improve that going forward? Yeah, so the biggest mistake, uh, not believing in yourself, not banking on yourself, I think is how you put it. Yes, not banking on yourself. I'd say another one is is um, not understanding how money works. Um, because I think a one of the biggest challenges is the lack of financial intelligence not understanding things such as passive income, residual income, linear income, the differences between the three. And sometimes it's harder for a person to make the transition from, let's say, going from being in a job to a business if you don't understand the difference between the time value of money that your time is more valuable than money. And having that perspective then makes you look at things such as, right, okay, how can I leverage my time? How can I make the money I have earn more money? So I feel financial intelligence is, is a second, second key. Yeah, and as part of that one, not understanding, one of the biggest mistakes is not understanding how money works. You mentioned passive income, linear income there was another income you mentioned um residual income so with yeah. with with linear income linear income is effectively income that you earn from yourself just doing something so that could be you in a job that means that the income you earn is dependent on you physically being in a position to work to make that happen um, the second thing, residual, in residual income, that is effectively income that comes as a result of you being involved in a system or having contracts or having memberships in place whereby you, you actively work to set something in place, but either monthly or we weekly, that asset can generate some income from you. So it is time it, it is time and you dependent but not as exclusively as it would be if you're just working in a job generating linear income the and it's a third, regular income the residual one it's a regular yes. income yes yes yeah. yes for example like netflix like a netflix subscription mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. like a regular income that's coming back to netflix but it's mm -hmm. dependent on the customer continuing to renew their subscription as it were so it's yeah. dependent on some form of action the the third point would be passive income now this is income generated from an asset that is initiated once so that once it's done it's in place and you don't have to do that again so that could be something like writing a book writing a song that once that asset is created and it's out there, the income comes in whether you work or whether you're asleep because that, that, is a, that is an asset that is out there that people can purchase day or night, which is why when you look at artists, you look at musicians out there, they're very wealthy because they've created a product that they can put aside and it's making money, whether it's Michael Jackson's estate, whether it's Elvis Presley's estate, these two are dead and long gone, but they're still generating money from an asset they produced many years ago mm. from their records. Brilliant. Well, thanks for breaking that down with us. So we've got uh, two of the uh, biggest mistakes, not banking on yourself 
not understanding how money works. What's the third one? Um, I would say this is the third one, but not the only one. But I would say taking financial advice from some from people that are either on the same level as you are or poorer than you. I think it's better to take financial advice from people who are financially richer than you or who are far ahead of where you are because they are already setting an example and proof of what's possible. Yes. Oh, love it. So not banking on yourself, listening to your own critical voice, the critical voice of others and not moving forwards, not understanding how money works. These are the biggest mistakes people make. And the third one, taking financial advice from people, well, let's just say for brackets, poor people or people who don't have the results you want. Yes. Yes. You're trying to build wealth. You need to take advice from people who've done that to some degree. You are ahead of you on that path. So thank you so much for sharing that. I think before we go, it would it, we need to say, what is the one thing people can start with? People may be watching this and listening, listening and saying, mm, I work a nine to five. I've got a bit of savings, but I'm not really for wealth buildings in terms of legacy. You know, where's the best place to start? What should they start with? I think it's it's getting just some education, just getting some knowledge, just really beginning to immerse yourself in the material that's out there, whether it's reading other people's success stories, reading books on wealth, financial intelligence, and really beginning to determine, first of all, what is it that you want? What do you actually want to achieve? And what are the reasons for why you want to do it? Because it's the reasons fundamentally that will make this possible for you because the reasons have to be strong enough for you to want to make a change or it will never happen. There will always be something taking you back to where you are. So um, I I would say that's a starting point. Um, Knowledge, wisdom, understanding through education, self-education, personal development, investing in yourself, investing in your mind. Because once that change happens in your mind, you will eventually see the evidence of that in the rest of your life. But it starts internally first. It's an in, it's an it's it's an intrapersonal thing before it becomes an interpersonal thing. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Invest in your mind. And a great place to start with that investment in your mind is legacylearning.co.uk, where you can listen to Atham's Legacy Learning podcast and learn more about the four L's that we've talked about and other wealth building strategies and, you know, foundation blocks to really getting started. So I want to thank you, Afan, for coming today, for sharing your knowledge, your framework. It's such a powerful framework um, with us and with the, with the listeners today. And is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you'd love to talk about or a word of inspiration? Um, like I, I would say that irrespective of where anyone is starting out, it's it's possible. It's possible. Um, I know with like yourself, you weren't always the success that you are now. We all had to start from somewhere. And I would say it's it's important to bank on yourself. But the way to begin that journey is through the journey of personal development. I can't say any more than that really invest in yourself, invest in yourself to become a stronger, wiser, better version of yourself. And then the challenges that you face currently that seem insurmountable, they, the perspective of those challenges will become smaller because as you become bigger, the challenges that you look at that seem bigger than you now, as you become bigger, your perspective changes to the point whereby you are now so big that as you look at those challenges, you recognize that actually 
they're not as big as I originally thought they were in the first place because I have a, a different perspective or I've, or I've learned a bit of information or I, for example, listened to something that Stephanie has mentioned on her show, for example, that has either altered my way of thinking or giving me a different perspective or a little bit of inspiration to make a change. Yeah, so true. So do uh, invest in your minds. I know you're already wealth building or interested in getting started. I know that if you're listening to this podcast. So um, thank you again, Afan. Thank you, dear listener or watcher. It's been great to have you with us for this conversation today. And if you would like to invest in yourself in terms of the Rent to Rent book, and you'd like to get started there, you can get the audio book version at renttorentsuccess.com slash audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E. And for now, I just want to thank you again, Afam, and to say to you until next week, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer. See you soon. Bye for now.